And with that, let's introduce our first keynote speaker. We got our first keynote speaker is uh, Joseph uh, McGillen. Uh, he's out of the Naval, uh, U.S. Naval Academy uh, uh, with the Stern program. I'm glad he didn't read the whole thing because it makes me look like I have a hard time holding down a job. I'm, I'm really pleased to be here with everyone today. Mostly, I'm, I'm pleased to be here with you. I have to, in, in the interest of full disclosure, I have to say I'm not real thrilled about the weather today. Last week, I was in Puerto Rico for the entire week doing a STEM outreach program with the DOD schools there. And that weather was absolutely perfect. It was like 80 degrees and just wonderful. And it was a real shock when I got off the plane back here in Baltimore. And it was like, but what happened? And so anyway, I'm glad to be with you. Not glad to be back here. <laughs> so um, I, I want to talk to you about three things today. For, first of all, the need for STEM outreach. The second, I want to give you a quick synopsis of, of uh, what we're doing at the Naval Academy, what our methods are. And, and then metrics that we follow uh, on how we're doing. And then the last thing that I wanna finish up with is what, what we all need from you, what you can do to help us uh, with this effort. So I first got involved in this back in 2004. I, I was still on active duty then. I was a, a captain down at uh, the Naval Surface Warfare Center in Dahlgren. And DOD had, the Department of Defense had done a study and they were a little bit alarmed when they looked out into the future and said, we're not gonna have enough people graduating with STEM degrees to fill all of the positions that the Department of Defense needs to have filled in order for us to continue uh, leading the world in, in our technology. So they asked us to, to take some of our engineers and send them out into the local community and work with the local school kids to, to get them excited and get them interested in doing science and engineering again. And <clears throat> it, it happened to be a, a BRAC year, if you're familiar with those, that's where they look at the bases and decide which ones they're gonna close. So it was always a good thing to have a really good relationship with your local community. So it was a no brainer for me. It's like, yeah, I, I fully support this, you know, go out there, let's let's do this. And and I remember the first time going to, to our initial kickoff and I got up there to in, in front of uh, a whole bunch of sixth graders to introduce the program and the disgusted look on their face, like, you know, what is this guy going to say to me that I really care to hear? It was amazing. And it was very intimidating to get up in front of them. Well, fast forward about eight weeks later when the program was, was finishing up, what, what they had done was built uh, the Mindstorm Lego uh, robots. And they had uh, all of these different tasks that were of increasing difficulty that they were supposed to accomplish. And we had this huge showcase for them, you know, to show what they had accomplished. And when I walked in there, I absolutely got mobbed by these kids. The excitement was absolutely overwhelming. They couldn't wait to show me what they had done. And the, all of the parents were raving about the program and it, it was a huge success. So it, it reinforced for me the importance of this STEM outreach. So now 19 years later, I look back and I say, you know what, the problem still exists. It's still probably as bad or maybe worse than it was before. So last year, there was two and a half million STEM positions that required a STEM degree in Department of Defense that went unfilled. And, and that doesn't, it isn't just government jobs. They, they're also the contractors that support the Department of Defense. And if anybody's been a, working with a contractor, they know how hard it is to find computer programmers and, and true radar engineers. They're, they're really hard to come by. And the experts are forecasting that in 2027, that 2.5 million job deficit is gonna grow to 2.8 million. So, so we have to do something about that. So the bottom line is we have this technology that's exploding and we all know it is. And our job, our, our, our education system and the, and the job force is not keeping up with that explosion. <clears throat> And, and, you know, I, and I'd look around, I, I see there's not very many people as old as I am, but 
you know, people, I, I, I look back and I remember the way it was back in the 60s and what got me excited about being an engineer. And of course, it was the, the space program back then. And, and I look back in those days and say that, you know, that was something that um, everybody knew, could name all of the astronauts. <laughs> everybody was really excited about the, the space program. And, and I remember like going to the gas station, you fill up and they give you this little lunar module uh, thing that you could build. You know, you, you, it was a cardboard cutout. You poke it out and you put it together. I, I probably had a dozen of those in, in my room because every time we walk past the gas station, we try to get one. And, and it was that kind of excitement that drew us into wanting to be scientists and engineers. We need, we need something like that again. Um, we just had a program at the Naval Academy um, called the uh, Astronaut Convocation. We had nine NASA astronauts uh, that came to that program. And we, we had a group of high school kids and very few of them could name more than maybe one or two astronauts in the program. And, and again, I remember as a kid, I knew all of the Gemini astronauts. That was like, they were all our heroes. And today nobody even knows who they are. All the, all the heroes today are, are, you know, people that play sports or the one that I hear all the time. That when I ask the kids, you know, what do you want to be? They say, I want to be an, uh, a uh, social media influencer. That's the way to go. And, and it's like, well, okay. Uh, have you ever seen some of those really cool STEM videos on YouTube? You could be one of those people. Um, so anyway, we, we need to do something. So um, I want to talk about what we're doing at the Naval Academy. So get the, I, I want to point out that there's actually two types of STEM outreach. So the first one is what I'll call preaching to the choir. This is working with the kids that, you know, build a computer by the time they were in sixth grade and they really love to do robotics. They'll come after school to be part of the robot team or, you know, want to do sea perch or something like that. These kids have already drank the Kool-Aid. They want to be engineers and scientists, whether we help them or not. And they're really important because, because they're with a group of peers that are going to reinforce the importance of what, what they're interested in and allow them to continue down that path. So, so I don't want to diminish that. that that's an, a really important part of STEM outreach. But there's also the second group. And the second group is what I'm calling the untapped potential. These are the kids that aren't really exposed to the STEM programs at all. In fact, they don't even think that, that they should be because they don't think that they can do it. And these are the kids that we really need to reach out to and get them excited about STEM. Because as, as I mentioned, that's the untapped potential. That's what we need to, to recruit in, into the STEM programs. So at the Naval Academy, the, the, the programs that we have for the, the, the kids that have already bought in, um, we do a summer STEM camp. Uh, and, and for those kids, they're gonna be taught by Naval Academy professors. We, we love to throw all the, the uh, formulas at them and let them do the, the math and, and show them all the gee whiz stuff that we have the, at the Naval Academy. They get to use the wind tunnels and the tow tanks and um, we can really impress them with the technology. We also have, um, I mentioned the astronaut convocation. Uh, we're, we're, in April, we're gonna do a flight day where we um, are gonna bring, again, interested kids. And, and these are you know kids that have already done a lot of this stuff uh, to the Academy for a day to work on fixed wing flight, rotary flight, and rockets. And, and again, these are kids that, that are really performing at a high level and we wanna, wanna encourage that. Um, the other gr uh, grouping I would throw in there is the Sea Perch group. So they build a little underwater rover that they, they can control. And uh, we have in uh, the end of this month again, um, we're gonna have, I think it's gonna, we're, we're up to about 80 teams of kids that are gonna bring their uh, sea perch vehicles to the Naval Academy and go through an obstacle course with those. So, so they're, the, um, they're the high achievers. The other programs that we do is, there's a, a program called the Summer Heroes Youth Program where we go out to the Baltimore City Schools and the, and the Washington DC Schools and we try to, uh, to expose them to things that they haven't been exposed to before. So in order to do that, you need to get something that's going to be really exciting to them. And usually what we'll do is some type of a hands-on project uh, that, that they can do in about an hour, and, and they're going to get a chance to take it home with them. 
and, and then hopefully they're going to relook at it uh, time and time again. So one of the ones I like to do there is we build a little hydraulic arm and we use uh, plastic syringes as the cylinders for the hydraulics. And, and uh, we can, as we're having them build these hydraulic arms, we're talking about the, you know, how hydraulics can multiply force tremendously. Um, one of the demonstrations I like to do with the kids is we, we have a, a syringe, it's like a 60 milliliter syringe and then a 10 milliliter syringe. And, I, and, I, and they're connected uh, with tubing and they have water inside. And I'll find the, what looks to be the biggest kid in the audience and I'll hand him the big one. And I'll look for the, the smallest girl in the audience and I'll hand her the little one. And I'll tell the guy, don't let that piston move. I want you to hold it as tight as you can. Don't let it move. And I'll tell the little girl, go ahead and just squeeze that piston. And of course it's multiplying her force by like six times. And as she does squeeze it, it he can't hold it back. And, and then, you know, every, the, the class loves it. They get a, get a big kick out of it. But now all of a sudden I've got them hooked. They're interested with what, wait a minute, how, how does that work? How did you do that? And, and, you know, that's one of the ways that we get them going. Um, and I'm going to tell you what the secret sauce is for us also. And that's the midshipmen that we have at the Naval Academy. So anytime that we can, we're trying to introduce role models for these kids. So we have about 70 uh, Naval Academy midshipmen that have volunteered to be part of our program. And whenever we do these outreach programs with these kids, if we can, we let the midshipmen actually teach them. So I mentioned the high flyers, we typically have the Naval Academy professors teaching them. And then the kids that we're trying to introduce for the first time to this stuff, we, we will typically have a midshipman uh, actually work with them. And the kids hang on every word from those midshipmen. They, they really uh, listen to them, they pay attention to them. And then hopefully what we're, we're doing is we're putting somebody up there that they say, I wanna be like that person and I wanna follow in their footsteps. And then the next thing you know, they're, they're actually getting interested in some of the programs. The other thing um, that we do a lot of at the Naval Academy is teach the teachers. So again, we try to um, show them how we do these hands-on projects and in trying to in get them interested in the program, we, we do very low cost projects that, that again, you can do in about an hour that have a lot of academic content behind them um, so that they can introduce that um, to, to those kids. So last year we saw about 30,000 students. We had um, roughly uh, 500 teachers that we were able to teach. And then we always asked the teachers, so how many kids will you be able to take this material to? And it ended up being about 150,000 kids that we have a, a secondary reach to. So, so that again, that all sounds really great, but we don't know what the impact is that we're having with those kids in having them actually pursue um, STEM type degrees later on. And that's the key is we need to have success with that. So the sponsors that we have, um, DOD STEM, I, I mentioned all, all of our funding, by the way, comes from these sponsors. We don't really get anything from the Naval Academy other than a place to, to uh, live and, and, a, and classrooms that we can do our programs in. So our sponsors are DOD STEM, the Office of Naval Research, a gentleman by the name of Dr. Ernst Volgino, who donates a, a lot of money specifically to the STEM Center because he believes in this, uh, the Cl U.S. Naval Academy class of 1982, Northrop Grumman, which I know you all know, uh, and Exelon, which is the power company up in Baltimore. And then also the Dodea schools. There, I mentioned we were in Puerto Rico. We were doing a program for the DOD schools that are all around the world. Um, and and they, they give us money so that we can work with those teachers to keep things interesting. So the last part that I wanted to talk to is what can you do for us? Or what can you do for the STEM outreach in general? Number one, and I know you're already involved, but get involved in other ways. And, and by that, I mean, you, you're all interested in, in doing this STEM, STEM programs, but I need you to get a little bit out of your comfort zone. And by that, I mean, if you're an electrical engineer, you like to do electrical engineering stuff. If you're a mechanical engineer, you're, you're fine doing the robotics. You feel very comfortable with that. But when we, we're talking to these young children, they might not necessarily be interested in those same things. 
So I'm going to ask you to get out of your comfort zone and uh, do a little Google search. And if you're an electrical engineer, look at some of the mechanical engineering stuff that you could do with kids. Look at the math. Look at other engineering projects that you might be able to do with them. You, you're going to be looked at as an expert, regardless of how much you know about that subject. And one of the things that I learned um, from a professional educator, which I am not, um, that, that, I, that I really took to heart was you don't have to be the expert on any of this stuff. And in fact, it's actually better to show the children that you're working with that you're not the expert. And, and when they ask you a question, even if you know the answer, say, hey, that's a really good question. Let's see if we can't figure this out. And do, do a Google search with them. Um, do a, a, a quick experiment. You know, Modify the experiment that you were working on and, and make some changes to an help answer this child's question. And they'll remember that so much more than if you just gave them the quick answer of, oh yeah, this is the way this is. Um, if you work with them through the solution, they'll never forget that. The other thing I wanna offer is come to some of our programs. We can teach you how to get you know, out of that comfort zone. We can give you ideas. If you go to uh, usna.edu and select the STEM, um, button on there, you'll, you'll get in, you'll see what our schedules are. And we always do things like a best practices worship, workshop. We always have our educator workshops. You're welcome to come to those. They don't cost you anything. Um, in fact, a, a lot of times we're, we will pay stipends for people to come to those workshops and we'll give you all of the resources that you're gonna need to do this outreach. This is a really important problem for the country. And it's something that, again, we all need to, to pitch into if we're ever gonna get it solved. The last thing I wanna ask you to do is celebrate scientists and engineers. We don't do enough of that in this country. You know, the, again, the heroes that the kids see, the role models are typically athletes or these social media influencers. They all know who they are. They don't know who the astronauts are. They don't know who the scientists are. Um, they might know who Elon Musk is, but but again, a lot of people think he might be a, ba a bad guy because he's pushing technology in certain ways that they might not agree with. Um, th this is something that we've, we've got to, as a nation, get back to celebrating the successes that we've had in science and engineering and, and present role models for those kids so that they can want to grow up and be like them. Again, remember the, the Gemini and Apollo astronauts, they were our heroes and that's what we need to get back to. We need to make some of those heroes today. And you guys are the heroes. So you need to get, stand up in front of those kids and be excited about what you're doing and show them what you're doing um, and, and make them wanna be like you. So with that, that, that's everything that I had in my prepared notes. I, I was supposed to leave a little bit of time for questions. Anybody have any questions for me? to continue doing that beyond the first push. Yes. Uh, what do you, what, what is your experience with that? And once you've given the first push, how do you sustain it? So, um, thank you. Uh, so I, yeah, thank you for the question. So I, in, in our group, we have, um, there, there's five full-time people and then I have one uh, part-time person. And, and we try to make sure that even though we, we all have our, our strengths, and, and our weaknesses in, in, uh, in what we can teach. We try to make sure that we have a rotation so that we're all doing all of the different modules that we teach. So even though you're not really comfortable with it, we'll say, you're, you know, next time around, you're gonna teach that module. And then we force them to go and, and learn something about that material so that they'll be able to do a, a really good job when they present it. So again, I would, I would ask you if, if you're, very comfortable doing robotics, try to get into, into doing something like sea perch or, or just stretch yourself out of that thing that you feel really comfortable with and say, you know what? I could learn how to, how to do a rockets workshop. I'll, I'll go you know, and, and do some research on that. And next time around, I'll do the rockets uh, presentation. So yeah, just don't, don't sit in your comfort zone, get out of it, look for something else. Yes, sir. I'm BJ from the IEEE Washington section. 
I was at the uh, University of Maryland for underwater robotics. Yes. That AUVSI uh, ran. And I was at Sydney, Australia, that both IEEE ran the University of Maryland event and at Sydney, Australia for multi-domain robotics. There were high school teams. There were college teams. There was none from Naval Academy either at University of Maryland, and there was none at, the, at Sydney. We would love to have a high school team supported by Naval Academy and a Naval Academy team next go around in two years in Sydney. How can you help us? And we have the team right here and we can help you, but show us the wares that are you really into this? Okay, I definitely need to get your contact information. I Let's see, there's 4,000 midshipmen. I imagine I'll have 3,998 of them that want to go to Sydney, Australia. Um, so I'm sure we could probably work something of, of course, the, the timing with the midshipmen is always critical because they're, they're, they're really busy and they don't, they don't actually get that much time to, to do anything extra. Um, so, but, but I, would, I would love to be able to fit something in there. They, again, they would love working with the high school. They love working with the high school kids, but they would love to work on something like that with them. And, and I'm sure they could probably fit it in with one of their capstone projects. Yes, sir. Hello, my name is Peter Seelman. I'm a uh, quantum information scientist here for my fellow Aspire students. Um, Woo! Yeah, so we are the high schoolers. Um, who are you looking after? I was wondering, do you do direct outreach to high schools specifically, like going to a certain high school and saying, hey, there's this really cool activity. We're from the Naval Academy, all that type of thing. Yeah, I, I yeah, I probably didn't do a good enough job of explaining that because I, I, I know it was a little short on time. But um, yeah, the, the, so there's two types of programs that we do, and that's either invite kids to come to the Naval Academy, which we like to do because the, it's a great campus. And we, of course, want people to be interested in coming to the Naval Academy. But the second thing that we'll do is go out to the, the different schools. The problem is, as I mentioned, there's only five and a half of us. So we can't typically keep up that kind of a pace going to the number of schools that really want us to come to them. So we're kind of selective and we're selective in that if we've had a teacher that has come to one of our programs and we know that they're really interested, we will go to their classroom and do programs. The, the Summer Heroes Youth Program is one of the best examples. So we do that um, in, in June every year. And we, um, we go to the different, high sc different schools to work with those kids. And I'm sorry, those are actually middle school kids. Um, we did do a program this past year up in New Jersey with high school kids where we, and again, this was a relationship that we had with a teacher up there. So, so that's why we went there. Um, so yes, we do programs like that. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw something out here also that might not be popular. And that's a lot of times with the high school kids, they've already made up their mind what they want to do. And it's really hard to influence them. If, if they haven't thought of science and engineering to, to suddenly change their minds and say, hey, that sounds like a pretty cool thing. I, I really think it's the middle school kids that we have a really good chance to influence their you know, trajectory through life. So um, I, I'm not, I, I don't dismiss the high school group at all. I, I, I love working with them. Um, in, in fact, we get into more technical stuff with them, which is fun. But yeah, it's again, it's a it's a matter of numbers, and that's why I'm I'm talking to all of you to say do that outreach to those high schools because there are those teachers that would absolutely love for you to come in and and do a program with them to try to influence and excite some some kids that maybe haven't thought about science and engineering. As a high schooler, and knowing. Even in freshman and sophomore years, we're still trying to figure out the trajectory a lot. Yeah. It's a generalization, but definitely we'd still be opening, at least at my school, knowing my kind of uh, community, we'd still be willing to hear you talk and your talk might actually make a tremendous impact on our trajectory. So I'd say keep on with the high school efforts. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, first of all, thank you so much. This was a really, really, really informative presentation. Um, as a high school student in STEM, how do you think that we... Uh, also can help contribute to the outreach mission and the idea of how high schoolers can also help with um, spreading STEM to youth. 
So, so again, I, I think as a high school student, um, you, ha you have a huge impact on those middle school kids. Um, if, if you can get involved in any of those programs, but also just encouraging the classmates that you have and, and, you know, showing them that, Hey, you've got a plan for your life and you know exactly what you want to do. Cause there's so many kids that don't have a plan yet. And, and again, talking with them, trying to mentor other people, um, I, you, you can, you actually can do that as, as a high school student, but you know, I, I would say you, you'll have a tremendous impact on those middle school kids. I mean, you, you probably know kids just around your neighborhood that, you know, if, and, and I've done this with kids around our neighborhood, just, you know, I'll, <laughs> we, we have a rocket launcher that, that we have at the Academy that it, it just works on compressed air, but I brought it home one time and just set it up in, in my driveway and it wasn't. 20 minutes before I had a dozen kids that were all really interested in what I was doing. And, you know, I got a chance to, to talk to them about what was going on and how to do it and let them make rockets and launch them. So, um, you know, just doing something like that in your neighborhood would be a big impact. Makes sense. Thank you. Hi, I was wondering uh, if your STEM Academy offers any uh, internships or certain programs for high schoolers interested in science like me. Yes, so um, we, we do have internships um, at the Naval Academy, and, but, but it, it goes through the Office of Naval Research. So um, when you apply for an internship program, you apply to the Office of Naval Research and then tell them that you were interested in going to the Naval Academy for the internship. And, and then they, we typically have four or six every summer that, that will intern with us. Um, we also have college students that will intern with us um and yeah we work them hard so <laughs> thank you thank you for taking the time out of your uh busy life and busy schedule to be here to present uh to us all and um my question for you is that as you kind of mentioned before we're entering a new uh digital age where a lot of the youth has uh more to look up to in terms of like as you put it uh social media influencers <laughs> So my question for you is, how have you and those uh, in a similar position at the Naval Academy taken advantage to try and enter into the social media and digital realm to yep. use that as a medium to get the interest of the youth? Yeah, that, that's a great question. So uh, a lot of our programs we do put on, on I, I know we have Facebook accounts and, and I'm, I'm, not the, I'm not the social media influencer, believe me. But um, I, I've got a guy on, on my staff that really is good at posting those things. So anytime we do a program, we always post, you know, what, what we have done. We always post what's coming up. And that's actually where we get most of our uh, people. So I mentioned that flight day. We have 75 slots and we've already had 150 applicants once we put it on social media. So um, we, we know there are a lot of people that are watching the things that we put out. Um, and and w one of the other things that I get asked often is, you know, why don't you do more of your programs online? And uh, again, we we really value that interaction between the people, you know. So we, of course, during COVID, we had to do everything online, and we found it really difficult to see if we were making in, an impact or not, because when the students were working on projects, we really couldn't see if they were having trouble or not. And then at the end, you would find out that half the kids didn't actually do the project along with you. So, and they had no clue what you were trying to accomplish. So um, we, we, we've kind of moved away from, you know, trying to do our online events, but, but we do use social media for all of our, um, you know, passing out information and, and getting people to apply for our programs. Yeah. Thank you. So we'll, we'll get to the online, maybe one or two. Uh, Anna, Anna Rosner, uh, if you can unmute yourself and speak. Yeah, go ahead, please. Okay, thank you so much for such a great um, presentation. I just wanted to ask, um, since engineering is a field that has such an issue with diversity, is, um, is there something that you focus on with your efforts to um, include like more girls or people who are underrepresented in STEM? And there's programs or anything that you found particularly effective to do that? Thank you. Uh, th yeah, that's a great question. Um, did, did you all hear? Uh, okay, so they, uh, she was asking, 
what we do to uh, influence diversity because in engineering right now, it's not a very diverse uh, uh, group. Um, and, and I did kind of skip over that because this group here is really diverse and I'm really excited about seeing that. So um, some of our programs, we, and we take a lot of heat for this, we will do uh, expressly for women only. So we'll have a, a girls day at the Naval Academy or the, the astronaut convocation was for girls only. And boy, we get a lot of hate email uh, from people that really wanna come to the Naval Academy and they're not female, so they feel like they're excluded. Um, the reason that we do that is we find that there's a whole different dynamic when we have all girls in the class than when we have guys and girls. And, and uh, most of what we see is the guys kind of take over and 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 the girls kind of watch them, you know, do the the projects and stuff. And of course, we we don't want that. Um, the other side of diversity, of course, is is reaching out to to uh, people of color that might not have been exposed to some of this stuff. So again, I mentioned that we do a lot with Baltimore and Washington D.C. schools, um, so that we can try to make everything uh, look the way it should as far as diversity goes. In, in, in that area especially, we found out that when we advertise a program at the Naval Academy, and typically that's like a Saturday program, um, the, the demographics will, not, will be definitely skewed. And, and mostly what we'll get are you know, the people that have the transportation and can come to the Naval Academy for that whole day and then get picked up later on uh, we'll get predominantly white students that will come. Um, if we reach out to a classroom and we say, we would like to either come to your class or have your class come to the Naval Academy, then we can fix that where we can get a, a much more diverse group. Um, and, and again, you know, the, it's very different with what you can do when you invite them to come to the Naval Academy versus, um, you know, when you ask, okay, who wants to come to one of our programs? You got one more question there. Yes, sir. I was very interested in hearing about the uh, emphasis on middle school students. Uh, we run a project here in Baltimore called the Robot Challenge, which originally started uh, with high school students. But mm -hmm. we have generally found now that the middle school students seem to be technically far more advanced than they were a few years ago. And they are becoming very interested in this kind of project. And uh, I would just like to hear your, your comments about uh, whether you are finding that the kids are actually more technical savvy at a younger age or whether that is just our own experience only. Um, and I'm just thinking about the difference between pre-COVID and post-COVID because there is a huge difference. But yes, the, the middle school kids are very excited about the technology. They are able to grasp it very quickly because they've grown up with computers. They've grown up with video games. Um, they, they, they're very techni technically savvy. We don't get into a lot of the calculations and things with them, but um, they can definitely uh, keep up with, with the program. So we've taught middle school kids to solder and and we you know we we have projects electronic projects that they they work on and they do they do a great job, um, but like I said they're, they're typically the kids that we really feel that we have an impact with. We can when when they do something you can see how excited they are that they accomplished a task and and you know we always ask them before they start and then after they start what they would like to be when they grow up, and it's it's amazing to see how we influence them because. A lot of them, you know, like they'll start off saying, I want to be a ballerina and a social media influencer. And then at the end of the day, they'll say, I want to be an engineer, a ballerina and a social media influencer. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, thanks very much. Joe, yeah, I appreciate you coming in, giving us the first thing for the day the, uh, for, after three years of after. There's a little trophy on the on the screen. Everybody can see what we actually handed him as a trophy for uh, or a plaque for for his uh, appreciation. Almost.